Hi, everybody, and welcome to the latest installment of the NSL's podcast. Hope you're all well who's listening. Alongside me this evening is my co-host John and two show regulars, Francis and William. How are you all? Good, good mate. thanks, mate. Yeah, good, thanks. Good, good. We've got plenty to talk about, so we'll get stuck straight into the last pre-season game, well, of the Wales camp and then the finished off nine against Bristol City. I know we've got press and stuff coming up, but we'll focus on the Bristol City game for now, finish nil each, uh, regardless of had two previous victories against Charlton and Sheffield Wednesday. But coming to yourself, William, first, I mean, the first 45 minutes for me, I thought we dominated the game. We did squeeze in there, but in, te- in terms of their half, they couldn't get out of it. We squeezed them so high up the pitch. But the only problem for me was it was the lack of end product. And we're going to talk about that during the show anyway, in terms of strength and depth and stuff. But coming to yourself first, what was the overwhelming feeling or take from that game? Uh, just that it was just a typical pre season fitness exercise. Um, I don't know about yourselves, but it's strange watching it in like a training venue. It just seems like you're watching a, a little training. Uh, match going on. Uh, yeah, not much to talk about uh, with regards to the game. Uh, dominated possession, I thought. There was some nice one-touch passing and interplay, but I, yeah, exactly like you said, no no end product, which I, I know by like, pre-season you're not reading any much, so I'm not too fussed, but it, it screams out like what we did last the whole of last season. We kept possession well, but there was no end product. I thought when uh, Johnson and Dembele were off, we, the, the, we, we struggled Going forward in the areas, we didn't really have much width. Um, so I think dipping into the transfer market soon uh, is needed in these areas. Uh, I felt for a Yeti, he was playing with his back to goal most of the game. And obviously that's not his biggest strength. He likes to play in the shoulder and getting behind. So it was a tough slog for him. Uh, yeah, so I, I mean... I think Ange himself said afterwards he he wants her, his teams to dictate the play and, and and make the opposition work around us and and we're going to put them on the back foot which I suppose we did in a way we dictated the play but if there's no end product then um, when it comes to competitive games there's no three points on the board so you can have the ball as much as you want but you need to put it in the back of the net um, and. <laughs> Going on other two preseason games, it was we're all getting a bit excited, which is, is fair enough. The, the football's back and stuff like that. Um, but I think we need we need some new faces and to freshen it up. Yeah, it's pretty evident. I think, isn't it? To be fair, I mean, you're right when they say when you say like the dictator play, which they did. I mean, it was Bristol City's first preseason game in their new performance centre, which I have to say, I mean, it looks like an excellent an excellent facility. It was brilliant. Um, but coming to yourself, John, in terms of the game. As William rightly said, a Yeti, I kind of felt for him. He was working hard off the ball. You can see he was making runs, but he ended up just the majority of the game just playing with back to goal because no one was even find him when he was making them runs. And especially when Dembele and Justin went off, we kind of lost the width and creativity that we were showing in the first two games. Do you think that, well, the Bristol City game more so is a bit of a a kind of throw to what the lineup's going to be against FC Mitten and go, well, going forward? I, I'm not sure. Uh, I mean, it's still hard to sort of tell what Ange's thinking and what he maybe perceives his, his lineup. But definitely, on the face of it, at least on paper, um, looked like quite a strong lineup, similar to the kind of team we'd have out uh, sort of last season. Uh, but I, like William said, it, it just like a training exercise, getting fitness up, match sharpness back. I think uh, again, like we'd have in previous games, we've seen large portions of the game where we dominated possession, we pressed them high. Um, but like you mentioned, there, there was ultimately no sort of final ball. Um, but again, I, I'm not looking too much into it. These, these games are the competitive games. They're not like, we're not good out there with a purpose to absolutely smash teams or whatever. But it's, it's again, it's just a, it's an exercise to get everybody rotating players, making sure fitness is up, making sure they're getting their sharpness back. So when it comes to the crunch, um, that they're more ready. So, I, I mean, it kind of did fizzle out a wee bit when uh, Dembele and Johnson and that went off. But, again, I wasn't really taking too much stock in the actual performances, so to speak, uh, or the, the fact that we didn't score. Um, what I'm taking for it is, is we've went three games now pre-season and we've, we've no lost. So, that's a plus side for me. Um, but I'm ultimately, as I said, I'm no to hung up on the fact it was a draw or anything. I think these things will come. Um, it's nothing's, Nothing happens overnight and it's, it's going to take time for it to fully click. Um, but I think it's going to be pretty impressive to see and it'll be 
we'll be certainly celebrating a lot more uh, over the course of this coming season once it does. But it's just another fitness exercise, is what you can say. That's no, no, no too much. I'm not looking too much into it. I get what you mean. I totally do. I mean, Postal Cog goes on the feet of Army marches on, so doesn't it? As you said, we've a free pre season. I well, haven't lost the game. We picked up a clean seat, to be fair, in the Bristol City game, Francis. And by all accounts, that I mean, they, they probably did have the best chances. They hit the post twice. We didn't really threaten our keeper. Was there anything in the game in particular stood out to yourselves? Uh, well, just to uh, kind of echo what the, uh, William and uh, John have said, like, we did, did have a lot of, lot of good possession and stuff, but lacked a wee bit invention in the final third. And I thought McGregor was back. Like, McGregor was really yes. impressive last night. Really good, he was really, really, good. really good, and uh, as much as I like to say Taylor's not the answer, I, I thought he was. I, I don't think you could really argue with his performance. He was forever shown on the left hand side. He got into great areas and was getting getting a lot of the ball and stuff. Um, Oregide was another one. Looked steady. Looked steadier in the set in central defence, but then struggled when he was forced out right due to sort of injuries and having to change his, the team in that. But yeah, it was just like, like William Jones. It was just your typical pre-season friendly. I'd, I think William makes a good point with the venue. Like, I, I don't think that maybe helps you to play that sort of high intensity football stuff. It might cause it gives that sort of a, it's in a training ground type thing if you like. So it gives that maybe feel about. And then we're pre-season friendly. Boys haven't got to give it one hundred percent off the bat. Like you'll get some of your younger lads, but your your guys like McGregor, or Yeti, Taylor, they'll, they'll just kind of. Tacking over if you like, just doing enough to get to get through the game. Yeah, so yeah, I'm not not reading too much. I obviously I did say on Tuesday it's in relation to the other two games. It's it's good to to help with as post to call goes new philosophy. If you're winning games, it maybe can get the players believing in it quicker and getting on. But you're going to you've got to get performances and maybe results like yesterday along the road. I don't think. It's it's a total total new system, total new way they want to play and stuff. So there's got to be wee stumbling blocks if you want to call yesterday a stumbling block. But no, nah, it's it's a preseason friendly at the end of the day. Take it with a pinch of salt, Francis. And that correct, right? but, correct. But look, what I'm going to do, I want to shake things up a bit in here. Okay, so we'll bring up a name that caused a bit of a stir last night in the group chat. It's <laughs> actually, and that's Greg Taylor. To be fair, now a lot of the Celtic Celtic sport are divided. And that's true to say. I'm much in the belief what John was saying. Maybe that he's not awful, or do you know what I mean? But he, for me, anyway, he's not the Celtic. He's, he's not Celtic's answer at left back. And I said there on, on the Tuesday podcast, I believe going forward, if he stays on, Bolly should be given the chance. But come to yourself, John. You were quite vocal in the chat about this last night. What was so disappointing about Greg Taylor in regards to what you were seeing in the game? I just don't think he suits Angus style of play. Um, obviously, we're looking to play a high press and attacking game. Um, you, it's only passing and moving. I don't think Taylor's a very good passer of the ball. Uh, personally, I don't think he's good at going forward. Um, by all accounts, he, he's a decent defender at SPL level, but he's certainly not the answer for me, um, especially if you want to play that high high intensity, high press. Um, we're going to need an actual proper uh, modern wing back, and he's not that for me. Um, I saw a few things last night where they're saying he, he worked hard. I mean, I'll give credit to the boy. He, he was running up and down the park. He was doing his best. I just don't think he's got it in him to, to ultimately make it great um, going forward. But he, he also made quite a lot of mistakes. There was time he was tripping up over himself. Uh, some of his actual passes were... Like, there was one point in the game where there was nobody near him. He was under absolutely no pressure. He was at the back himself on the left. And it was just a, it was a simple pass. A few, like maybe ten yards, and he still couldn't. Like his pass wasn't. He, it was still off target. Like how he, he can't make mistakes like that. And it wouldn't be the first time I've seen him do it either. I just don't think for me. Like I know some of will disagree, but I just don't think he's good enough for the type of style uh, that Ange is obviously looking to play. And ultimately, we need to be aiming higher and and try to sign somebody with a bit more pace and who's got a final ball. Um, and doesn't mind running at the man, so aye, that's my two cents on it. <laughs> I mean, I, I very much agree with yourself. I know that's not often me and you, we always butt heads, but I do agree in terms of uh, Greg Taylor. I, I think 
that he's not, I know people say Celtic standard, but again, what is that? Nobody actually knows, but I don't think he's the answer to our left back problems. And people say to me, you said Bob and Gully, but he does deserve a chance. Like, at least in a run of games, it's showed he can do his, his season kind of a disaster kind of ended last season in terms of what he'd done at Celtic. But again, give give a player a chance, don't mean. But come to yourself with him on the Greg Taylor argument. Do you think going forward, as John kind of rightly said there, that he thinks he's not the answer? I'm saying that as well. What, what What's your personal opinion? Um, well, I, I I disagree. Not with so much that he's not the answer. Uh, that he's not the answer. Obviously, I feel like he probably could go out there and get um, a more talented footballer. But with regards to that, um, he doesn't suit the philosophy. I, I think he's got a good engine on him. He does get up and down. He, he could he could work a high press, no problem. I think he has got a good delivery, and I think Ross put up in our group chat last night. He was fourth in assists or something for Celtic last season. Um, he gets up and down there. He's a very, very solid defender. Um, now I'm, I'm, I'm singing his praises here. That's not me saying that he is a wonderful football player. Or I think he's the bee's knees. I think he's very decent, and I, I do feel like he's been the best left back we've had since KT. It's not saying much because it's been Bolly and Laxalt who I think are. Two dreadful, dreadful, dreadful <laughs> left backs. I think if you can actually think back, if I think back to their time at Celtic, I can pick out mistakes from Laxalt and Bolly that have actually properly led to goals on numerous occasions. I can't see that with Greg Taylor. Um, so I think it's I think it gets unfair stick at times. Saying that, uh, I thought in the friendly last night he was absolutely rank rotten. He had a poor, poor game, but I mean, you can, you, you're not going to show up every game. Um, uh, uh, yeah, like, I mean, we've, we've touched on it before. I think he gets some unfair stick at times. I think he's a very decent player. But that's not me saying that he is our number one left back and should be the be-all and end-all. If we went out and got somebody, then I wouldn't be disappointed at him getting dropped. But I do think he's a very decent player and I think it's unfair the stick he gets at times. I think as well, what you could say about him, like we all can, he's a solid player. Like I'm not doubting that. I mean, as you said... Defensively, he is a he is a good solid defender for SPFL level. But I mean, I wouldn't call him a progressive left back where he can beat a man and whip a ball in. You say there that he was on the assist list, that's true, but most of them assists were for cutting back in field and getting the ball into the box fair, like a, a low ground pass or a float across. Yeah, but like I said, I, I, I know I said it in a group chat last night as well. I don't understand where this a full back needs to beat a player comes from. They're not all Jinky Johnsons. Like I've never seen Andy Robertson doing a step over and beating somebody. It's all about positioning and passing a one-two and getting the ball, getting good deliveries in the box. He doesn't need to beat a man. He can beat a man by passing the ball or playing one-twos. It's the same with, I'd hate to say it, but the, the, the team across the road, they've got Barisic and Tavernier. And I, I can't remember times of them skinning players. It's, it's all about delivery and, and uh, positioning and timing. And I think Greg Taylor can do that. Well, what about yourself, Francis? Where do you stand on this? Because I think, William, you actually did make a great point there, to be fair. Um, I would, I would like us to go and get someone else, but that's more. It's I'm similar to what we mean, Joss. I don't believe he has the answer going forward. Would I be too disappointed if we focused on other positions? No, I would. I would be happy with Greg Taylor to go with Greg Taylor this season, but I would like us to try and get better. I think he is a a, a good defender. Um, going forward, I, I don't. Rate him. I don't think he's brilliant, but I was to be fair, I was surprised when Ross put that up about the assists and stuff. And I'm, I know you've touched on he was cutting back inside and that fucking care less. The assist is assist at the end of the day. I know, I don't care if he's crossed it and uh, he's back heel. I, 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 was, I was surprised about that. That's that to be fair with Greg Taylor, but uh, I couldn't care how you assist someday at the end of the day. It doesn't need to be a cross, but I personally, I don't think he's got a great delivery on him. But what I would say for Greg Taylor is he's 23, is it? I think you just said this. So, and while he has got a good injury, he does get up and down the park. He, he always kind of looks knackered, but he's no knackered. A bit like what Kieran Taylor is. Kieran Taylor runs and 10 minutes later looks knackered, but he's no really. He just seems to always look knackered. But um, uh, it's like, because his age, he maybe could be coached. And then you never know, he could, could be done, so he could be developed into the type of left back we need. But if if it's me, I would want us to go and get another one. But at the same time, if budget, the budget's probably better spent elsewhere than now. Because I think you'll get by with Taylor for at least a season anyway. 
and maybe next season you can go and get maybe another target that's when you've got other positions uh, sort of tied up that are, pro- are probably more important because in fairness to Greg Taylor, I think he'll sort of be like a 67 out of 10 every week and, and that's to an extent it's good enough for a guy that I didn't want to be that didn't want as a first choice left back. No, I, 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 get what you, I get what you guys are saying. I mean, I've almost John's convinced gone, myself John that he's a player. Here, what's going on? So. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Contradiction, Vanny, oh, I love it. Unbelievable. <laughs> well, I've almost convinced myself that he's a brilliant player. There. <laughs> I'm no, only getting a five-year contract now. Oh, my highest played in the club, eh? <laughs> I get what I get what you guys are saying. I mean, as you said, six, seven, out of ten. I did describe him as that. I think he's solid, and I'll stick to the word solid, but. I'll move forward with the word that he's not good enough to be Celtic's first choice going forward. We need to look, look to be something better. I think everyone's in agreement that that. Uh, or, or would we be saying yes to that, yeah? Well, yeah, but see with that as well, like, I, I would look at other players on the team, for example, right? Like um, Sorrow. I'm a big fan of Sorrow, but I think he's, again, just another steady player that gets you 6, 7 out of 10. Nothing, nothing wonderful about what he does. He's solid and just does his job. But he's like, when you be... buy Canty off Wish... Aye, oh but, my God. but like, I, but I wouldn't be going. To, but I'm not screaming to get sorrow at the team. I just think sometimes it's a bit unfair. Yeah, no, I, I get, I get what you're saying. I mean, I mean, we will come on the players that have stood out and stuff, and we're going to talk about that going forward. But I do get what you're saying on, on Taylor in terms of it sounds unfair the criticism we get. But I'm not going to waver. Like you're not going to waver from your opinion. So we'll move forward to kind of recapping the preseason so far. We've seen Sally go down the wheels for their training camp. Posta Coglu had time to implement a style over the last three games. We started off with a 3-1 win against Sheffield Wednesday, 2-1 against Charlton, and then nil all against Bristol City. Coming to yourself, William, first, has can you see the style coming through? And, I mean, Jurgen Klopp always describes his way of playing Liverpool as rock and roll football. I can certainly see that as being rock with lots of rolling on their post <laughs> about yourself. Yeah, you can definitely see style coming through. Um it's difficult when he's first coming in, and he, he the, I mean, the squad is really, really thin at the moment. Uh, we're, we're using a lot of the young boys and stuff like that, and and some of them have shown, but I don't think that they're, they're, they're first team material. Uh, you can definitely see the style he's implementing. There's lots of lots of lovely one touch football, fast pace, interchanging uh, people moving positions. A far cry from seven number tens standing on the edge of the eighteen yard box like we were doing last year. There's there's Definitely try to get more width, um, moving it from left to right, and trying to find wee pockets and stuff. So there's 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 definitely improvement, and I felt like we've looked pretty solid at the back as well. There's been one or two occasions, but we, we have looked solid. Um, Franny mentioned Origidi there. I thought he looked decent at centre half. Did, uh, did. I, again, I, I he's never he's never a right back. That's nah, two halves we've seen him at right back. He's never a right struggled back. Struggled so. there, like. And it was the same against uh, Sheffield Wednesday. Uh, no, Char- Charlton. Charlton, sorry. He was at right back and he didn't look like a right back. But he, he looked fairly solid at centre half. So, um, and we've seen a few. I, I really, really like the look of Sh- uh, Shaw in the middle of the park. I think he's got a massive presence. He's he's great in the tackle. I think there's at least one of the goals that came from him using yeah. this high press and getting stuck in and then and then and passing it over. I think he can. I think he can really, really step into that Scott Brown role um, and let McGregor do his thing. I thought McGregor was fantastic last night. The guy just, he's just went and played the Euros and he's, he's played that 90 minutes again and he just looks like he's, he's not even got a hair out of place. Um, I'm, I'm, it looks like he's going to get the captaincy and I think that's going to be massive for him uh, and he's I think he's going to be pivotal this year. Um, so, yeah, it's been a good run out and I think... Um, like we say, we're starting to see their style, and at the end of the games, I, 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 it doesn't look like Big Ange is still not not too happy that. Um, well, there's, I mean, there's been a half here and there, or twenty minutes here and there where we've looked a bit lackluster. But I mean, that's pre-season. Uh, he's obviously got high standards, but I, it seems for me overall, it's fairly positive going forward. So uh, yeah, he's got a couple of goals as well. So yeah, I mean. I have to admit, I was a bit gutted last night that Barkas got injured before the game. I was so looking forward to seeing him again play. And he played in the he played the chart the chart the game and he was almost up in the centre centre circle, just standing there like it was normal to him. And in regards to what you said about McGregor, I think that's a brilliant point. What I've noticed, John, especially, is the fullbacks of Celtic are tucking in and they're also they're like forming extra centre midfield players and it allows yeah. McGregor and um who was playing alongside him, 
Turn, Sorrow or Turn, Turnbull, 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 yeah. Turnbull to kind of go forward and get in wide positions and kind of overlap the fullbacks and overlap the wingers. It's, it's crazy how to do it. But are you seeing the style being implemented and are you happy with it so far? Yeah, I've been impressed by it. Uh, like I said, it's a, it's a different way of playing football and it's going to take time to implement fully and to get up to speed. So, I mean, as I said earlier, I'm not looking too much into it in that respect, but you can see what we're trying to do uh, and you can see spells where we're doing it really well. Like William said, we, there's a lot of good one-touch passing football. We're moving up the park, we're pressing high, we're putting them under pressure. Uh, so I'm liking what I'm seeing. Um I think a few of the guys, obviously McGregor, uh, doesn't look like he's skipped a beat. He's he was back on, um, picking up these performances in for the Euros. Um, Shaw really impresses me. I said this earlier as well. He, he kind of he looks like he's going to provide us that uh, sort of engine in the middle of the park um, that we're losing in Brown. Um, a couple of the young guys impress me as well, but ultimately again, I don't I agree. I don't see them. Um, being permanent fixtures in the team going forward, but certainly, it shows promise that the, the the younger boys are certainly talented, and I'm hoping this Colts thing um, does them the world of the good and gives them the opportunity to get regular football under them again, because I think some of them could, uh, especially in a couple of years, be ready to step in and do a job, uh, assuming we don't lose them. Um, but yeah, I'll, I, th- I think it was fairly... Decent pre-season as again. We didn't lose any games. Uh, we're, you're seeing the style that Ange wants to implement. It's not going to happen overnight. We need to be wary of that. Um, no, sort of look too much or look too deep into that. Uh, the fact that some periods we it, it didn't work and it wasn't anything maybe because th- these are these are the these are the sort of kinks that you need to work out when you're implementing a new style and stuff like that. And as I say, it will take time to get familiar and. Again, you, you need to settle it ultimately as well. You need to start settling on a starting eleven, so let players get used to playing with each other and um, sort of used to the way that they play, and then you'll be able to read them better and know what what sort of moves to make next. And I think, as I say, in, in due course, it's going to pay off uh, in a big way for us. I'm confident in that. Um, so a couple of new faces in, uh, and I think we'll be ready to go. But aye, it's been a good preseason. Yeah, it's, it has been a solid one. And I, I paid that ten pound to watch it on the Bristol City TV. I think that's called like Robin's TV, Francis. And you talked about McGregor at the top of the show, and their co-commentator, I think, was their pathways manager into their first team. And all he did for the majority of the game was say Turnbull and McGregor were top, top, top footballers. Do you think this style that Anz Postecoglou is trying to implement in the Celtic? We've seen it in fits and starts, forty-five minutes here and there. Do you think it's starting to come to fruition? And like the likes of McGregor can flourish, especially playing further forward. I think Francis might have his mic muted, boys, but coming... Yeah, are you there, Francis? I actually have. <laughs> actually, I totally had it muted, then I heard you saying it, and I went, I'd been off for a week on there. I actually sounded better muted. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, aye, so anyway, McGregor and Tumble. Aye, so I, I think, well, McGregor played higher up the park under Rogers and flourished there as well, and... He has got that pass in him. He's he's quite creative and stuff. So I think him and Tumble can flourish under this the way Ange Postecoglou wants to play. Because we all know what Tumble can do. Just he looks kind of the real deal, and uh, McGregor just looks like he's came back and carried on his Euros form. So yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing seeing how they two play under the way Postecoglou wants us to play. Yeah, no, hundred percent. And moving on, the players that have kind of stood out over the last three games and. For me, Adam Montgomery, I think, looks brilliant. I mean, Leo Hjelda, the young central defender, again, he looks promising. As John said, many of these players might find themselves in the Colts team going forward. But, Francis, come to yourself. I mean, Dembele, for his 45-minute cameo and his goal against Chartlin, he looked he looked quality. Unfortunately, he went off injured, but we'll come on to that soon. What players for you have stood out over the preseason, especially the last three games that we've seen? Well, obviously, McGregor, Aye, obviously stood out. Moffat, I thought it's been okay when he's came on. Been pretty decent. Uh, Shaw uh, has looked good as well. Welsh, I think, has kind of carried on his form for the last season. And yeah, Dembele looked looked good. I just hope the injury isn't isn't that bad because we all we all want him to kick on in that. So it's just the, the sort of expected ones like your McGregor and Tumble and stuff have have impressed. But it was good to see, obviously, guys like Ayeti. Wells to keep his form going on. 
it was good seeing Barkas come in. Didn't really have much to do, to be fair. And then, yeah, it was nice seeing some of the youngsters and by accounts, they, took, they, they played okay, but like William said, a wee while ago, that it's, some of these youngsters were maybe getting the chance simply because how how thin the squad is now. No, I totally agree. What, what about yourself, William? What players for you have impressed? Yeah, I mean, like I touched on, Shaw's been the one that's really stood out for me. Um, I think a midfield three, I think our first midfield three eventually when we start getting a good um, run of competitive games will be will be Shaw in there rather than Sorrow with, with McGregor. I think if, if, with McGregor and Turnbull. I think if he's in there, um, he's so good in the tackle for what I've seen. I think if he's in there mopping up, it gives the, the other two the freedom to, to go and express themselves. Um, a few more that stood out. Yeah, Dembele stood out with his little cameo, and I don't know how bad his injury is. I'm hoping it's not too bad. Um, I Welsh is another one that's. I thought he was very good last night. He's, obviously, he goes about his business, and you don't really notice. But I thought he was fairly solid, and I think it's promising for this qualifier we've got coming up. We've actually looked fairly solid at the back, and goals will come as, as long as we're not leaking them. Um, so I've been impressed with the, with the backline. Uh, yeah, a few of the youngsters. Uh, Montgomery's been very good, very solid. He's never a left winger in a million years, right enough, because um, he played them up there. But he's, uh, I, I think he he's a proper prospect. He could be a, a very, very good left back for us uh, going forward. So there's there's a lot of positives. Not many. There's not many that have disappointed me. So if you're looking at the other side, everybody's done fairly well. Um, I think uh, for me, Shaw and McGregor have been the two big standouts, but. Everybody else has been fairly solid, and there's not been anybody that I've thought, "Oh, Jesus Christ, this guy's like rotten." So, <laughs> so it's all fairly positive. I mean, for me, the one thing that disappointed me, and it's no, it's no slap on the guy because his best possession centre half. But see, when Uruguay played right back, I was like, "Oh yeah. my god!" Yeah. How is there any? How is there anyone worse than Ralston at right back? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I, by the way, I'm not. I, I'm. I, I think Ralston should never shouldn't be in a Celtic jersey. But this preseason, he's not done much wrong. To be fair. I would agree with that. Yeah, that's fair. What about yourself, John? What players have kind of took a shine for you anyway? Yeah, Dembele, I think like most Celtic fans will have been impressed by him. Uh, Shaw, definitely. Uh, Origiri looks solid at centre-back. Montgomery. Um, Seen McGregor back again. Turnbull, as as we've said. Um, And uh, Ayeti looks fit and he looks sharp and I'm hoping that he can carry that into the season as well and, and find some form uh, and score plenty of goals because we're going to need it. But I, I, I'm impressed with just about everybody, as I say. I don't think anybody really had a bad pre-season. As I said, some of these young guys look like they could play a part for us uh, in the next couple of years, especially in this Colts thing, hopefully them getting regular football uh, through that setup. Um, we can see a wee bit more of what they're capable of and if need be, be able to slide them into... Because uh, they'll be a little bit more match fit and, and sharp. So if, if we do have any issues where we're struggling for certain positions, especially th- through the league anyway, um, it's like we've got guys there that we could maybe uh, bring through to, to step in because I, I, some of them I, I, I could trust to, to play a part during the season. But yeah, I, I think quite a few of them uh, impressed me anyway. Yeah, no, 100%. I agree with you in terms of that. And moving on to some... A couple of negative points, and that's the injuries to Dembele and Johnson. I know Barkas was injured, but it was a dislocated finger, so hopefully he will be okay for the Champions League game. But Johnson looks to have went off with a hamstring injury, and by all accounts, Dembele got a rough tackle to the ankle, and it looked quite sore from what I've seen on the TV anyway. But coming to yourself, William, first here, is it a concern with a lack of depth in the wide areas, especially? We've seen this last season when we had to rely on certain players and injured all the time, and Posse Coglu alluded to the fact on Sally TV that He's quite thin on numbers, especially coming into this crucial Champions League tie. What is it for you that, I mean, Johnston, he has an atrocious injury record. Do you think he's ever going to get a break in the Celtic shirt? Um, I'm not so sure if if, if there's, there's ever a season that he's going to have to do it and, and, and bring it. It's, it's going to be this season. Um, I mean, you, I think you guys touched it in the last podcast. He's guys made a chocolate. He's he can never ever get a run of games. It seems it's only one or two games here or there, and and he's and these are like you said, it's not like out one week with a hamstring or whatever. It's it's months or, or weeks and weeks. Uh, it's it's disappointing because I do think there's a player there. Um, I think he 
tries to play the Celtic way, there's a bit of flair about him, and he, he, he's one of these wingers that's always looking to attack, always looking to run it, run at fullbacks and put them on the back foot. So uh, I would really like to see him get a run on his side. And I mean, it's it's not the lad's fault, it's no Celtic's fault. It's just it's just unfortunate. But um, when you're talking about is it a concern going next week? It's a massive concern for me that we've not we've had these guys pick up knocks. I thought Dembele was very clever when he got his knock because he, he, he played it, he, he cut inside in a way that um, the, the only thing that the opposing player could do was foul him. It was uh, a horrible tackle. But it, it was, was, a it was a bad, bad challenge. Um, and the, one of the biggest uh, concerns for me is we've only got a Yeti up top just now. He came off and, and we put uh, Moffat up, up there and he's never, he's never a striker in a million years, so... If we go into this qualifier and a Yeti pulls up in the warm up, who have we got to play up front? That's really, really worrying. Um, so, yeah, like I say, we've been looking solid, but going forward, if, if these guys, um, if these guys are picking up injuries, then we, we're really, really going to struggle to score goals. Yeah, I, I'm 100 percent in agreement with yourself there. And for me, Johnson, I mean, we did speak about it last time. He's 22 now, and he's picking up injuries every time he plays or yeah. something. And it's, and it's more or less when when players aren't even near him. William, to be honest, he, he's pulling up with hamstring or, or muscle injuries. That's that's the new go-to favourite. But coming to yourself, John, Dembele looked for me anyway. He was building up ahead of steam and he was like, making impacts. And, and as William said there, like that that turn in he did in field, the, the only option that player had was to take him down. But it's pre-season, so that was a horrible tackle to do then. But is it a concern for you getting into this game with the lack of, I know we signed your man, but we'll get on to that, but is it a concern getting in without the likes of Dembele and Johnson, especially for us, self-isolating back home? Well, I mean, we don't know the extent of their injuries yet. Um, I'm hoping, although given his track record, Johnson worries me more than the rest. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, we don't know the extent of it. He might have just felt a wee pull on his, his hamstring and then decided that rather than risk playing through it or making it worse, that he, he, would, he would just call it and get taken off. Um, so it might be fine. Um, but it does worry me because, like William said, I, I, I see a player there as well. He's, he's clearly a talented talented player he's 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 got the ability but it's the fact he can't maintain uh, any sort of running in the team that that worries me and he he, he definitely seems injury prone uh Dembele was it was a shocking challenge I was roaring at my telly um because there was no need for it as you said it's pre-season um but again we don't know the extent of that he might be all right it might be fine He, he he was on two feet and he hobbled off the park but as I say, I'm just keeping my fingers crossed that they're no serious, um, so that we've got. Because I'd like to have Dembele going into the uh, Magellan game. Um, Barkas, like the, f- what did he do? He did to dislocate his finger. Well, that would imply he's done one or two things. He's made a save finally, but nobody seen it. Oh no, 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 no. <laughs> or, uh, or, which is more likely in my eyes, he's missed. He's save. He's landed on his hand. And he's hurt himself. <laughs> I mean, like I say, it's only a dislocated <laughs> finger, so I'm sure it's no serious. He's he's going to be fine as well. Um, but I, I, I mean, it's it's worrying. But I'm 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 sort of trying to remain positive in that they're no serious injuries. And as I say, we don't know the extent of them yet. Nothing's been really released in in terms of that. So um, they'll obviously be getting checked and making sure everything's all right. And I'm sure. Um, this weekend we'll see whether or no it was serious or whether they'll get rested obviously we, we Tuesday in mind but I'd prefer to have Dembele and Johnson available certainly. You managed to make both scenarios of Barkas's injury sound like and imply like he's still shite That's, I don't know how you managed to do that honestly <laughs> but, <laughs> but until I yourself. actually see him do some, that's going to be the, the, the theory I have I'm sorry but what? I mean like I've, I've not seen anything convincing and even I would rather he doesn't need pre-season. to do anything because then that's when we're not conceding goals. That I, listen, see if he, see if he, we do put him between the sticks. I hope that that's what happens because I don't trust him enough, and so we're going to need to make sure that we're not giving him any work. But again, the first game of pre-season, uh, he was bad. Um, it wasn't he great, um, and I've not seen. Put it this way, I've just not seen anything from him at all that that tells me or shows me or gives me anything to sort of reason to put trust in him at this stage so that's wonderful fair. wonderful head of hair he's got though eh? Aye. It's a, I wish I had his head of hair same yeah, me too. 
But right, I can, guys, ca- I can catch here. a ball. Focus up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need to drop my lasagna when I take it out of the oven. So you can keep these here. Right, we're under the belly of Johnson, right, Francis? We're back We're back on the show here. You guys always do this to me. Right? So coming to yourself, same question to John here. Is it a concern for you? I know obviously the guys have different takes on it in terms of what the injuries could be like, but by all accounts, Dembele, he let out an awful squeal and he was pictured on the sidelines after that with his head in his hand. So from that, it doesn't look good. But as John says, it hasn't been confirmed yet what has actually went, ha- what has actually went on or happened. But... Get into the Midtjylland game without either of them is quite a concerning prospect, isn't it? That is concerning, but I mean, I th- we're going with Michael Johnson's track record, like we say, there's a good chance he'll be out for a wee while. But even regardless, a hamstring injury is not something you've got to kind of recover with, usually recover with. In a, a sort of a week or two, usually is a few weeks, it'll be out minimum with a hamstring. And then, so I'm just, I'm, I'm similar to John, I'm hoping it was just. With being pre-season, any slight knocks, no chances were taken. It's just we'll just take these boys off, and then we can get it rest, get them rested up straight away. So, fingers crossed. That's all it is. Is just we. It, it's just one of these ones. It's all right. It's taking a knock. Deal is that that was a deal. Any anybody gets any knock, anybody feels anything, you're coming straight off. And uh, obviously, we've got confirmation with like it's a dislocated finger with for Barkas. So, I mean. That could give him another reason to get out of the way things against Mitchell, but I, I want him to be a goalkeeper, but I find it hard to justify playing Barkas when I'll argue I'll argue with John about guys like Laxal and that and I'm trying to make a case for and I'm trying to make a case for Barkas. So I'm I'm surprised he's never brought that up. Yeah. But, you, yeah you've, just but, give, you've just given the ammunition to bring it up now. I have but I I'm just trying to be fair to the guy. I'm just wondering why he's never brought it up before. The difference but, uh, between the two, Francis, is that <laughs> at least early on in his first few games for Celtic, Lacks out did look a player, and you can't yes. deny that. I can. That first old uh, fun game, he was absolute dug shite. Uh, I disagree. His first, his first game. But he, he definitely showed glimpses. Barkas, hasn't he? I don't know. We're, so, we're, not, we're not talking about that. Anyway, Dembele, anyway the injuries, hopefully they're just, uh, just precautions have been taking them off. No, that's that's fair. I mean, I think it's a concerning factor, as William said. You're going in there if if it happens, you go in with no width. You go in with if a Yeti picks up a a nickel injury, then who are you going to play up there, Moffat? And well, technic- well, Edward's still there. I mean, yeah, but he's I injured, isn't he? Is he? I don't know. Yeah. I, I didn't know if that was just an official line or anything. That's what worries me more than anything. I'm, no, I'm not convinced he is injured. I think they'll be just why he makes sure he doesn't get injured because uh, the importance of this game coming up. I think it's uh, more the fact that it's so they can sell him. Yeah, true. That might even right. that as well, but I mean, I would much rather. I mean, you 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 risk playing him, and then he does get injured. I mean, I we 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 shouldn't be thinking of that. Like, oh well, what if he gets injured? Or we can't sell him. That shouldn't be what we should be thinking about. To be fair, if we need him, he should be used. He's your player at the end of the day. We shouldn't be thinking about trying to save him for some deals. Well, look, what what we'll do now is, I mean, we'll move on to transfers. And before the Bristol City game last night, Celtic announced that they signed. And I forgive me again, Leal Leal Abad Abada. From we'll go with that. Is, yeah, Israeli side Maccabi Patak Takiva. Yeah, I'm woeful. That sounds like a <laughs> yeah, order of start on it. I thought he did start. What did you say? Listen, let me finish <laughs> what I'm saying, right, boys? Right, <laughs> we can feel the same. Around about 3.5, 4 million pounds. He's a right winger, can play in the middle as well, off the striker or as a striker. He's played upwards of 70 games for his club, 20 goals, 10 assists, and he's been capped for the Israeli national team. And come to yourself, Francis, is that the type of sign, and he's 19 as well, is that the type of sign that gets you excited, or do you think it's another project player that Celtic are looking to make a profit on in the future? Well, I've, like John, I sign him in Football Manager. I mean, I'm only joking. I've never heard of the guy. <laughs> never heard of the guy. But, I mean, we, we're, have we really got to be signing many players that we've actually heard? They're probably not. And, yeah, you could argue he's a bit of a prospect because he's aged, but at 19, he's played nearly, what was it, 90 games, did you say there? Aye, upwards of 70. Upwards of 70 games. And I, I think last season he had 14 goals and seven assists. So his previous season, he's had a pretty good season. And it, it fits the Celtic model signing signing Young to pretend like the likelihood is it will at least make a return on our money. We might not make great, great mo- uh, money back, but you'll probably recoup minimum you'll recruit what you get so it fits the business model if you like but 
it's exciting. It's a, it's a position we need because it's competition for Forest and essentially backup for so. It's at least an area that we were looking to sign. The fact that he can play up, play up front and play just off the off the front as well, which uh, uh, covers some some other areas. But yeah, predominantly, obviously, as a he's a right winger, so it's it's nice to get a, a signing in the door and one for a position we've really been crying out for for a while. I think it's quite telling as well. William, he, he signed a five-year contract. He uses a four-year contract, but this is a big, big contract in terms of what Salvi can do and. I mean, a lot of supporters are kind of kind of painting the link between Agent Duhan, who kind of brokered the Beton Ambrose days. He kind of comes to Celtic Rescue all the time. But do you think this is a sign where Celtic have asked for favours again, or do you think it's someone who's scouted? Um, that's a good question. So he's a host. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a good question. Could be both. Uh, it's, I mean, I've done the usual and and did the the, the football scouting on the YouTube clips. Love and it. Uh, he's got a, he's he's got a decent shot on him. To be fair, a lot of his goals look tidy. But saying that, I watched Marion Sved on YouTube when he signed, and I thought this guy's <laughs> the best player I've ever seen in my life. Have you seen the, if you've not seen the, any of them, by the way, go and look at YouTube and Marion Sved goals because <laughs> they're unbelievable. Um, I mean, I, I I'm I'm fairly excited. There's plenty of players we've never heard of before that have signed. Uh, Luba Maravchik being one, Henrik Larsson mm-hmm. being another one. I heard of these guys, but they came in. And now I'm not saying he's going to be anywhere near that standard, but um, I think for me this is a market we should be going into. I know we're looking at a couple of Croatians and uh, the Swedish boy. I think we should be looking at the European market. We've touched on it a lot in this the tail end of last season about our own league and the likes of Nisbet and stuff like that. And Nisbet's name keeps popping up. And I, see, for four million, I, for me, I don't think you, you talk about uh, a lot of guys talk about Greg Taylor coming. Coming from Kamarnik, and he is that's his standard Kamarnik player. I feel like Nisbet's similar. I don't think he's going to um, boost boost their team. I don't think he'd walk into that starting eleven, and that's a lot of money to pay for that. So, so I think this market is where we should be looking. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm, 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 if, if we're paying that much money for a 19 year old, and we know how. Oh, I was going to say we know how Celtic like to keep the pennies in the pocket with, with splash the cash last year, but if you're spending that much on a 19 year old, he's not. He can't be horrendous. Um, but you, so you, you I, could I, counter that William and say they spent 3.5 million on Marion Sphere, and he turned out to be a dud on a Celtic that's, shirt. That's very true, mate. But like we, we, we constantly say, <laughs> every signing, Sven there's no really signing guarantee. Chance, though? He didn't, but there might be a reason for that. Uh, so, I was in loan. Um, well, obviously, well, he's, what's he been through? Three, three managers now, and not one of them's fancied him. So, um, I can't really comment until I see the boy in action. Uh, but I'm I'm excited to see him. I'm, it's it's always exciting when you're freshening up the team and getting getting new players. And I've banged on for months about how I thought this team uh, has got stagnant, and we've we've kind of rested on our laurels because we were winning everything. And uh, I always bang on about uh, Alex Ferguson and. We need to see when this is coming and change it up. So all new signings are always, uh, always nice to see and exciting to see coming in, and, and it's definitely a position we're looking for. Uh, I would, I would have loved if, if we got a right back in before the, um, this Champions League deadline, but I don't know if that's going to be the case or not. But uh, yeah, exciting to see what he can do. He seems to be, be quite a flair player and can, can, can pop up with a goal here and there. And like I say, yeah. a lot of the goals I've seen were. Uh, strikes from outside the box and stuff like that, which last year we were screaming out for five yard passes across that eighteen yard line. You're screaming somebody hit it unless you're Ryan Christie. Uh, <laughs> so, so yeah, I'm excited to see what he can do. Yeah, no, that's a great point. I mean, I think he plays out in the right mostly for his club and and the country anyway. And John, do you think this is kind of leaning towards maybe you see Abada on the right, Forrest move over to the left, and Turnbull being the number ten? And it, to counter that as well, it's not concerning that Dembele is coming free still. And they're signing these right wingers, knowing that's the Billy's position, or do you think it's like kind of bringing in players of equal quality and letting those battled out for positions? I, I originally thought that. I mean, I don't think ultimately, I don't think with Dembele being there and Forrest um, that it was a position that needed immediate attention. Um, but listen, I don't know what Angie's plans are for any of these guys, and if he, like you say, if he plays Forrest out in the left, which he's, he's been played out there before. Uh, we don't need, have anybody out on the left, so he could solve that problem at least uh, and for a short period of time. I hope it's no a long time because I think Forrest is definitely better on the right. 
Um, but I, 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 I don't know. But I mean, like William, I, I, I watched videos of him on you. I didn't know who anything about him, but I watched videos of him on YouTube. He certainly looks a player. I think we ought turn into scouts now um, when we hear a guy's name uh, and we go in and we, we, we try and find out as much as we can about them. But he looks apart, like he says, his stats for his age certainly look impressive. The fact he's even been capped uh, at his age is impressive um, and his price tag, given his age, uh, would suggest that there's a player there. Um, I don't know what you touched on earlier about the boy, the agent who assists us. Um, if if you've got that contact, then utilise it. Like mm-hmm. if there's if it's a player we're looking at and he's in that market and you've got a route through to that player, utilise it. Like I I said this previously and I, I'm still in firm belief as it is. I'm sure you are. I still think Ange is dictating who we're signing and who we're not. I don't think any players coming out of this club are getting brought in behind his back or without his say so. Um, and I'm I'm in firm belief that. And the fact that he's in the door, and just getting lit it, and just okay with it, and just wants him in. So I don't think it, uh, utilizing the contacts, etc., that we've got, uh, and the network that we've got, makes perfect sense. Um, if you're able to, you, like, if he's able to assist us in getting somebody in the door, then fine. But I still I believe that it's definitely still uh, Andy's man rather than just Celtic going back to yeah. the old ways or whatever. Um, I would also say as well given his age. I know a lot of people see young players coming in or, or signing young players and immediately think that, oh, he's no first team ready then. Uh, he's a project and all the rest of it. But I don't think that's necessarily the case. I think a lot of clubs now, a lot of the top clubs in Europe, that some the best players they've got in their team are young. Um, around about that 19, 20 mark. And it, it doesn't, the fact that he's that age and like I say, he's, his record seems to, to pr- prove that he's certainly a talent and what we've seen him he certainly appears to be that way so I, I firmly believe he is first team ready uh, I'm sure the other boys that we've been linked to if any of them come in they're young as well that they'll more than likely be first team ready I don't think we're in the habit you know, of just bringing in young guys as backup for positions we've not got first team players for so I think um, so see, see, um, what's, what's David Turnbull 21? Uh, yeah, I, so. I think that's a perfect example of that he's came in and we're, yeah. we're looking at Oh, this is the next prospect for, and he's came in, and we're now building a team around this guy. Oh, so yeah, it's a it's a perfect example of your point that you're saying that these, I, it's the young guys, and does it look like another prospect? But we don't want to be saying that. Like, I've talked about Aaron Moy and stuff, and I thought he's, I think he's a Aye. fantastically gifted footballer, but he's thirty year old, thirty years old now, and I'd much be, I'd much rather be bringing these guys in if we can get, if we sign five players that are nineteen twenty, and four of them are duds, and one of them's a David Turnbull, I think that's a success. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I definitely agree with that. And another one is Dembele. Um, we've been screaming for him to get a chance for years and look at his age. Uh, and he's, despite his age, he's been playing in considerably higher age groups than uh, he should have been. Um, so I don't uh, age is just a number at this point. Um, so I, I see a lot of it online when we sign guys. It's like, oh, there's a young boy we've never heard of. They immediately assume, oh, he's a project. He's just going to rot away in the youth set up or whatever else. And he's never going to get a chance. I don't necessarily think that's the case. Uh, with this guy, I don't think it's a case with uh, any of the ones we've been linked with, really. Same with that Vuskovic that we were linked with. I don't think it would have been the case with him either. But he, what age was he, 19 or something uh, like that as well? Uh, 19, 20? Uh, so, I, I, I mean, I, I'm definitely excited by uh, the signing. Uh, some of the names were linked to as well. Uh, I'm excited by and I'm hoping we get them in the door soon as well. I think that's another point with the see with the wingers point. Sorry, Stephen. See with the point with the wingers where we're talking about we're signing him, but we've got Forrest and Dembele and stuff like that. There, I don't think it's necessarily when you guy by these guys. It's like he's a right winger, especially with uh, Ange's style. It's I mean these guys are going to be interchanging and switching and stuff like that anyway. And as uh, Ryan pointed out in the last podcast, Forrest is the wrong side of thirty now, and he's he's never going to he's he, like. We need rotation, and it's a big, long, hard season. So, I think the Dembele's and Abadas and stuff like that will definitely get their chance. And like we've seen it last year, yep. the Welsh and stuff like that. If they come in and play two or three games on the trot and they're, they're on fire, then and and with the signs of big ang- it's, age isn't an, an issue. If they're on fire and they're playing, that they're going to be mm. they're going to be playing. So, to add to that as well, William, like you mentioned, there's a good point about Forrest because he's no. Exactly. I mean, the the older he's getting, like you say, he's right side of thirty now. But he's no 
ever been the, like the strongest. Te- he's still susceptible to injury. And we've seen it for things as well. So absolutely having players in um, and, and accounting for that. Because if we decide that, oh, we've got Forrest and Dembele on the right, we don't need anybody else, then it's like you're accounting then for you've got cover and depth. Again, I'd much rather we, we we signed a left winger because I think it's an area we definitely need. Aye. Another striker we definitely need. A goalkeeper we need. Uh, central defenders we need. Um, I'm sure they'll come in time, but I mean, I'm still happy with the signing and I like the fact we're making progress and we're bringing guys in the door. Well, speaking about new faces coming in, I mean, and in regards to what you said, John, about age is just number. Possibly Cogley has said that himself before that if they're good enough, they'll play no matter what age they are. And another, th- another thing about interesting, I find interesting about Abada, he was linked to a move to Dynamo Kiev, the biggest team where he's from, and that kind of mm-hmm. fell through due to money issues. So there must be something there. And his height, he's only like five foot six, which I find quite interesting, especially in the Scottish League, how that dynamic's going to work. But moving forward, that'll be interesting to see. But new faces now, Carr Starfelt, the top journalist for Fabrizio Morano, however way he says his name, he said that Celtic have agreed a five million pound deal. Negotiations are kind of agreed as well, and he's due as medical. That was two days ago now. So, Adams was asked about it last night, and he said he's not a doctor, so he can't speak about medical. So, he could be coming in the net maybe tomorrow for the deadline for the, the Champions League tie. And then Brandon Sabi from Rennes, Francis, he s- seems to be another guy so that they're extremely interested in, along with the other right back at Rennes. His name escapes me, so if any of you know it, please tell me. I think Boy, he's I can't bit. remember his first name, but I'm sure it's Boy or B O E Y. BOE, so boy then, so he's available for around the 1 million euro mark, and his, his counterparts available for 4 million euros, Brandon Sapi. And then the same today on Twitter, Francis, that we're interested in Carmel Gundabelli's cousin, I'm pretty sure it is. The, the yeah, Dabelli, Peterborough. Sir, Sir, yeah, Sergei <laughs> Dabelli, the plays for, mm-hmm. for Peterborough. But do any of them other guys kind of get to accept it if they're coming in the door, especially positions we do need them in anyway? Does that know his brother? Is his brother Dembele. a, 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 a I don't uh, know. They're related know. anyway. They're me, related. My mum yeah. and my dad and my grand and <laughs> They're related anyway. Um, uh, the Starfield one, I, I think, is could on paper should be should be a good signing. He's a good age, which twenty six, so he's he's coming in at a good time, and obviously adds that bit of experience. I know we're talking about getting youth in. There's no issue with youth players coming in, but. You obviously need to kind of get the balance with more experienced players, but you'll have guys like McGregor and, well, Barkas and then Starfield, guys that are a wee bit older. But yeah, Scandinavian boys, they tend to, they tend to suit the Scottish League and don't really yeah. need time time to come in. I'm not, I can't really think of many, many sort of players from that region that kind of fail in Scotland. They might not be outstanding, but they generally do a, do a good enough job. And then, to be fair, the Russian League, not that I've could say I've seen one league game, but by all accounts, it's probably not. It's probably quite a physical league as well. So, I think I think that's an interesting signing. It should on paper everything should be a really good signing. If it, it fits the model and how Postecoglou wants to play, with his his range of passing is is pretty good, and he can do the short pass, he can do the long pass, and his uh, his stats on that are pretty positive, and he's he wins a lot of headers at both ends of the park. So, yeah, that's. That looks a positive sign. Soppe, I'm I'm fairly excited with that. Not that I've seen much of him, but he's obviously got Champions League experience. He's played in it, played I think it was 16 games or something in the French league. He's he's young as well. He's your kind of modern day fullback. It's up and down the park, and he can tackle and he's, he can put in a good cross. He's the other boy from them as well. Just seems kind of seems similar to Soppe. I think one of the reasons he's only got less money is simply as in the last year's contract. I think that sounds a cheaper option. I think I would be surprised if the both of them came in at right back. Uh, more so the fact that Ren I don't I don't know Ren's situation, but it would seem weird if they sold two right backs. So I think it I think with Soppy and Boy it'd be one or the other. And I would simply be saying Soppy and it would all be down to the fact that it costs more. So I'd get more excited because it costs more. But uh, Dem- Dembele, I think, is again, it's another one. He's, he looks apart and stuff, but I, d- I really t- I don't know much about him. I read a wee thing as well, seen a wee thing on Twitter that I think we were apparently interested in a boy loosen or Leuven, uh, a Ukrainian boy left winger, but 
Uh, it was a boy, I think John mentioned it in the group chat earlier, but I'd also read that we've offered one million over the asking price, but it's on the agreement with secured European football or something. So I feel that that just seems like some mad made up rumour to appease somebody. So whether there's any truth in that, I don't know. So yeah, some of like your Starfield and your shopping boy excite me a bit more because it's positions that we really need players in. Yeah. I'm I'm much agreement. What what about yourself? I mean, you look at Starfelt, centre back, Sabi and Bowie, two right backs, and then add in Dembele, he's a winger, right or left, and then Abada is a winger as well. Are we starting to get the team into shape with these signings if we get them in and over the line? It seems that way. Um you know you know me and rumours, Stephen, I can't stand them. Until <laughs> they're in the tell they're at Celtic part with a scarf above their head, I don't believe a word. But uh, the Starfield one seems to have really picked up. Uh, I mean, you've got caps for your country, and you're you're in your early what's he twenty four, twenty five. Yeah. I mean, you can't be a, you can't be that bad a player if you're getting caps for your country. So uh, he would be one in the centre half position is definitely one uh, we need to strengthen. And saying that, uh, we're gonna uh, I don't know when Big Julian's due back, but he's going to be like a new sign, and he's and he was obviously you know, had a wonderful first season. So. Um, that's something that needs to be in the back of the back of the head, back of the mind. Uh, he's due to come back, and uh, I, I think uh, Franny was touching there on the, the right backs. So I think that's my, I think I really, really do think that's something we need to push on and get a right back in. And um, like I said earlier, I don't think as much as he's he's had a decent preseason. I think I, I don't rate Ralston at all. I, I mean, um, I think he's had more chances than John Kennedy, and he's still at the club. So <laughs> um, he's went through more managers anyway. I think. But um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's this qualifier. It's, it's it's difficult because Andrew's only been in the door for a matter of weeks, and we're, we're we're screaming that we're not ready for this. I mean, it's not his fault. Obviously, it was drawn out over the summer with him that shouldn't be named. Um, if we had Andrew in weeks or months before, we we could be all set and ready to go. So it just seems like it's a mad rush um, for this qualifier. But with the team that we've got now, and 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 how we've looked in pre-season, as long as we're keeping bodies fit, I, would, I, I, I still fancy us to, to hopefully get through, and then if we do, then we can get the ball rolling and get the squad bulked up, because we are, we are looking very, very thin at the moment. Yeah, I think I think someone's dog agrees, agrees with you well, William, there, we're giving you the heads up. <laughs> but um, as well, looking at it, John, William makes great points. So you, you look at the likes of Starfelt, again, centre back, Soppy and Bowie, both right backs, and then the belly's a winger. They are filling the gaps in, in terms of if we get them over the line. Now, there was a player you mentioned in, in the group chat. I can't remember his name, but I have seen his name before. I think you've said it before. Who was that guy? I can't remember. That, is that that Loving uh, guy? That Franny, I know. Uh, yes, yes. Do, do you know much about him, though? No. I know mm. I've been linked with him before. I know that much. Uh, yeah. But like Franny says, it just seems a wee bit... Again, and, I, and you know what I'm like with rumours as well. Like, I'll, I'll say stuff that I hear or I pick up or I read uh, <laughs> with you guys in the group chat because it's something to discuss, isn't it? It's like, we're going to get linked with all sorts. There we go. I mean, I believe it. <laughs> He's I, I don't believe that that one is one with any, any, anything behind it. I think it's all the shape, but there we go. Um, in terms of the staff belt, if he's half the player as the last week, the centre-back we had, then I'll be happy. Um, I'm, as I said, I'm excited by I saw the face wasn't that good. Oh, he called you out there. <laughs> I meant like the proper, like starting regular. That's okay, John. We'll let you away with it. You know who I'm referring for, to you, as well. You forgot about him. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> well, do you blame me? <laughs> uh, but I, you know who I'm referring to. And yeah. um, like uh, the right backs as well. I'm, I'm, as I say, I'm, I'm excited by Soppy for probably more silly reasons than most, but there we go uh, I mean the fact that he costs as much as he did and he, he is highly rated uh, in all accounts so uh, the other boy boy I, I mean we could essentially still get both right the, that right side of the field right back position is still one we're really thin on mm-hmm. um, so having somebody as backup as well especially um, somebody that uh, maybe younger that you, you can sort of help develop as well a little bit more um, I don't see anything wrong with that but yeah it looks like we're starting to fill out the, the positions as I say. I still think we need a. I'd still like to see us sign a goalkeeper, uh, a couple of guys out on the left, a striker. I think we're all right in midfield. If we get this staff out in, 
Uh, like William says, with Big Julian coming back as well with Welsh. Uh, sorry, I'd like to another maybe centre half and we'd be all right. But uh, we we knew coming into this it was going to be very thin and we needed to bring players in. But I'm glad that Celtic seem to be making moves and and there's a lot to talk about it. It's, it's quite definitely quite exciting. But uh, like William says, until it's out of the line in the at Celtic Park, then. No, that's that's fair. I mean, I get what you're saying. I mean, three days is a long time in Celtics. Where we were moaning about the, the transfers on Tuesdays. One night we were kind of going along with it, saying they're filling the gaps in if they get these players in. But that's the way well, it goes, no, I think it? if you if you think back, Stephen, uh, uh, I was very positive. In right, all right. To, I mean, the signs I mean, is coming uh, in. Uh, <laughs> I mean, myself and Ryan McGinley, we were the ones being negative. Fair enough. <laughs> right. But moving on, we're going to step onto the outgoing train from Celtic Park and... The guys that are mentioned is Ayer, Rodgers and Christie. They were pictured together, one part of the squad. And, I mean, today it's came to light again that Brentford's come back with a revised offer. I think it's only 500000 more than we're going to give us in terms of 13.5 million up front plus add-ons, John. Are you comfortably accepting that bid now? Or are you still of the belief that you were on Monday in terms of holding out, or Tuesday in terms of holding out for more? I, I, I mean, we need to remember that it, it, A, he wants to leave, B, um, he has in the last year his contract and see that's still quite a bit of money um, I was happy that Celtic were kind of standing firm um, but again we didn't know the, the reasons behind it and I, I also suggested maybe I has been like and I'm not interested in the move to Brentford but what came to light in the days following that is that he wasn't happy about it um, maybe Brentford's picked up in the fact that he's it's obviously there's a bit of unrest there and that, we reject, that bid was rejected so they came in slightly improved offer and is what I'm led to believe now is that, that it has been accepted so it looks like Ayers probably on his way out What's your opinion then on the Rodgers and Christie? Do you think they're going to stay? Don't know about Rogic. Um, he's got a relationship with Angie he's, he's one of the only guys yeah. in the club that actually knows him um, I think the, uh, uh, the fact that he's no featured uh, again, I wouldn't look too much into that. There could he, he could be injured. Uh, Christie apparently some team fake was it Abu Dhabi or something. Yes. Saudi Arabia. Al- I think it's Saudi Arabia. Say that. Uh, Saudi are willing to pay in excess of ten million for him, so he can go to. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Is there going to pay ten million for him? I think so. It's in excess of ten million actually. Wow. Um, oh, f- I would need. To, I would need to go back and check it, but ah. it, it wasn't. A, it wasn't. A, it was. Double figures, anyway. Yeah, that's mental. Do you know what someone's done there? They sent them the YouTube tips of three years ago. <laughs> like the, this is the pay I you're told, going to get. I told them we've still got a three-year contract, I think. <laughs> what about yourself, Francis, in terms of IR, 13.5 million? That seems to be agreed. He seems to be heading to Brentford by all accounts. Rodzix, as, as uh, John Reddy said, he could be injured, but he hasn't featured in pre-season. And Ryan Christie is linked with a move to the Far East for an excess of £10 million, which is baffling to us all. But would you be happy if all three left? Uh, I, well, I am not. Like, I are, it's, it's an evil. He's, got, he's, he's been so public about about leaving. So it's one of the ones, he's gave us good years. And he was obviously made a promise last season that he could leave. So it's one of the ones that just it happens in football. You've just got to thank him for what for what he done in thirty and a half million, I think is like I said in a Tuesday, I thought it was a great deal at the time that we'd rejected. I also commended Celtic for standing firm and saying no we want this, but clearly it was they were just trying to eke a wee bit more. We don't know the add ons could be significant more. There'll be a, I imagine there'll be a sell and so the potential of the deal is probably more favoured to Celtic now achieving the number what they wanted to maybe Brentford's previous offer. Um the Ryan Christie won. It's, if Ryan Christie could turn up, the guy we had three years ago uh, to two years ago, it was, I, I would happily have that guy around. But if we get the Ryan Christie last season, then I'd take 10 quid, never mind 10 million for the guy. <laughs> uh, but uh, Rogic, I would be surprised if they've won simply, I, I'm not hearing any rumours of teams in for him. And two, like John touched on, it's, it's a guy that post a call who can maybe trust in the dressing room. It can be like a wee his right hand man if you like. Like I know William picks on like Moy. I, I think Moy was brought got to be getting brought in as simply as just it, it was got to be post a call this guy in the dressing room has his guy he can then pass over everything on to the, the sort of the playing staff. So Rogers could actually be a kind of captain that's not a captain, I feel like, with with that kind of thing that is because he's got that working relationship already with 
with post Cogo. So I would be surprised if Rogic left, but the other two, I'd be more surprised if they stayed. Yeah, that's fair enough. I mean, the the thirteen point five William, as Francis said, is a great bit of business plus the add ons and maybe a sell on clause free in there. And the, the ten million pound one for Christy John said that I mean that's cloud cuckoo. Well, I, say, I mean I wouldn't take I would take that with a pinch of salt anyway, but well, that's fair. I get that, but I mean, uh, if that's the if that's the fee, that's crazy. I mean, that's, that's a great deal. What What about yourself, William? Where do you stand on the whole Ayer, Christie, and Rodgers? Yeah, the Ayers, um, bye bye. You're getting that sort of money. See you later. You don't want to be here. Um, I, I, I spoke about it before, and I, if you're announcing you don't want to be at the club, then you you can, you can go. Yeah, I would have accepted five million if that was the case. If you're not want to be here, then. You, there's no point in you being around, and it's like I mean, I know there was rumours touted about AC Milan's and stuff like that. They were wanting them. So if it was like that, if that was the case, then you know what, you could go with the best wishes, and but you're going to go to Brentford, really, when you can stay at Celtic and win trophies and be an icon, and exactly. Keep, keep going, go to Brentford and do a Gary Hooper and get relegated and end up falling down the leagues. <laughs> you know what? Fair play to you. See you later. It's. He talks about wanting to play in the best leagues in the world and stuff like that, but uh, I'm not so sure. Um, Rogic, I, I I love big Tam Rogic, Rogic. I think he's a <laughs> fantastically gifted footballer. Tommy. But um, if, again, if you're getting decent money for him, then I'm like, I mean, he's not played a massive part in our squad over the last few seasons. Even when we had Rogers and stuff like that, he's never he's never been wanting to last. A full ninety minutes, or, or get a massive amount of run running games. But I, I, if we could keep hold of him, I would. But I wouldn't be too. I wouldn't be mega disappointed if we got decent money and he left. Um, Christie, I think I really like Ryan Christie. Uh, I, I think I'm one of the only ones <laughs> in the podcast that that, uh, that defends him. Uh, I know he's had a bit of a tough time at the end of last year, but I think especially with Postecoglou's um, vision and, and and the way he wants to play, I think Christie fits that. He's he's got See, a good I engine. I, I agree with that. Like, well, I agree with that. But... High press engine, um, interchange and playing movement and stuff like that. I think I think he could flourish and uh, if he gets to to play in the team. Uh, but if he's only got what, I, I'm pretty sure his contract isn't even a year, is it? Is it no yeah, January or something? So if that's the case and you're getting stupid money from him, then I, I, I suppose it's a no brainer. But I would I would like to see Christie stay. I think he could flourish in, in a side playing that sort of football. Uh, so yeah, I are by the other two. I'm quite happy to see you stay, but if you don't, I'm not. I'm not going to be broken hearted. No, I think we're all in agreement there. I mean, it, 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 I mean, Ayer has publicly come out and said he wants to leave. So sadly, you're kind of them in a hard place about that. They promised him he can leave, and you, you rightly said there, William. It's Brantford. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You're not leaving somebody to go to a European heavyweight or a top eight or top six club in the English Premiership, as probably he thought he would. You're going to a Brantford who could be relegated and. As you say, do a Gary Hooper. But look, if that's what players want to do, go down and make a bit of money for themselves and retire happily, that, that's fair enough. If, with no impetus behind their name, what can, what can we do to stop that? But I mean, if, again, the counter, he could end up playing for a top club if he does well. Brentford, who knows? We'll never know about that. And could, we'll but, move on. He could, but there's, if you look at all these players, there's only really one that I can think of that's went on to proper, proper big elite club, which is Virgil van Dijk. I, I mean, I know he went to Southampton and, and then went on, but. I can't think of anybody else. I mean, yeah, Wanyama yeah, yeah. went, went to Spurs, but I mean, that's not. Ayers no doing what Van Dijk done. No, I don't believe. No, no, no chance. No, that's what I mean. So, unless um, he thinks maybe he can, in which case that's why he's happy to do it. He's like, oh, I've got one season in the EPL, that'll be enough for me to win a seventy million pound move to. I mean, it could kind of do like a, a Wanyama or something, or like go to a bigger <laughs> club than Brentford. I don't like I said, I don't think he went up. It's a risk though. Do you know what I mean? Like what he's given but, up and what he's he's gonna do to risk it for is but he maybe believes in his still. There's no right there's no harm in that. I wouldn't exactly. I wouldn't argue that. But I mean I certainly wouldn't be giving up a uh, Champions League football, European football in any way, shape or form, winning medals, trophies, to go and fight a relegation battle, regardless of what league it was in. I think it's all fair in terms of what we're saying. It's all, I mean, we all can't agree on it. I think John's right what he says. Like, you wouldn't want to leave Celtic go down to Brantford. I certainly wouldn't. The vast majority of Celtic I mean, fans. We're Celtic, fa- we're Celtic fans. Yeah, no. Celtic no, fans. Celtic no. Fans. no, but even no, if I wasn't a Celtic fan, if, if, I was, if you were at a club and you're playing 
regular European football, you're regularly winning trophies, medals, and you've got a chance to go and play in the EPL with a team that's going to be fighting relegation and getting winning hee haw. You wouldn't. I, I, I can't even imagine. Like no Celtic. Just think of another club. I wouldn't do that. But no chance. Money, money talks. Is that football's different than money talks? I know, but it's always been the case. It's exactly why we lost Tupa. Right. We will let that go, let that slide, and we'll move on to the last <laughs> segment of, this, of the show. And we'll slip it in here. It can be as brief as you want, guys, but we've seen this week that Peter Dahl has been confirmed that he's staying on as a director of Celtic Football Club. And I, I think it's to do with his role on the European board. I think he has to have some sort of official role at a club, which is Celtic. And come to yourself, John, is it a concern with you that Peter Dahl is still staying, staying on as a director? No, fully expected that he's got shares in the club and I thought that that was going to be the case anyway. Yeah. What about yourself, Franny? Same as John. I, don't, I really don't think he'll have... He'll not even be picking the soap that's in the toilet. So, nah. I'm, not, I'm, honestly, <laughs> not, I'm honestly not fussed about the guy. It's, it was, it's not new, Stephen. We knew he was going to be there because he's his shares and stuff and his role it within not, the ECA. It might not be new, but I'm saying it on the podcast, <laughs> right? What about yourself, <laughs> Yeah, time three, just to <laughs> me, exactly the way the boys say. Well, look, that brings us to the end of the show. That was quick for another. And we'll move <laughs> on to the quiz. And you'll be happy to hear the Celtic quiz is back. I don't know, because between... Wally, Wally beat me in the last Celtic quiz. <laughs> I was hoping for one of the random ones. <laughs> and it's between Francis and William. You know the rules. If he's ready, we'll crack on. Yeah. What I will say, though, as a third party, I'm going to start doing this. Uh, if I'm fine. on and we're doing All the quiz. Right. If Stephen, if you gee, if you say somebody says something different from what I hear, I'm calling it. All right. I you thought you meant you were going to do the quiz again. I thought it was going to go yeah. from Peter Loyal. John, this isn't some sort of VAR decision. I make the call. <laughs> all right, that's it. <laughs> I think you're biased. Then. John, that's why. John, you do what you want. Hey, <laughs> hey, John, you, be you, you be you, John. Right, we're going to crack on. Right, so first Thank question. You. Celtic bought a, a player for £6 million in the summer of 2000 and then another player again for the same sum of money in the summer of 2001. Can you name them both? Chris Sutton and Lee, Neil Lennon? No. No, they were saying the same season. It was oh, Neil Lennon and then... John Hapson. John Hapson, yeah. Uh, Franny, what's your final answer just to make sure? Neil Lennon and John Hapson. He got his goal. Both wrong. Oh, my Jesus. Can... I'll give you one more shot. Go, Franny. I'll let you go first. Chris Sutton and John Hartson. Perfect. Franny got it. That's one to Franny. I'm taking it, Wally. Fair play. <laughs> John, step in here anytime Quest. you want. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, you told me that. I'm, I'm, I'm no, told that my, my, my opinion is overruled by the rules. <laughs> <laughs> Question number two. Can you name the first Celtic player to score for Scotland at a European Championship? Hint, it was Carl June. McGregor. Carl McGregor. McGregor. No, no, it was in June 1992. Oh, John- Craig Bolt, no. Uh, Tic-tac. Day. Yeah. Uh, well, eight, that's one each. Uh, fucking yes. Question, uh, question number three. Name the first World Cup winner to play for Celtic. Janino. That's 2-1. Is that 2-1 yeah, or 2-1? 2-1. Yeah, 2-1. Right. Question number four. Celtic's biggest margin of victory in the Scottish Premiership came against which team in 2010? Aberdeen. 9-1. Yep, you got you got it. So that's two eight. Jesus. Question. Oh, no. Five. Question five. Is anyone crapping themselves yet? Yes. <laughs> Question five. Who became captain of Celtic in the wake of Kenny Douglas's departure to Liverpool? Oh. Oh my Jesus. No way. I know. Too young for that. Ah, uh, same. Well, move on. Move on. Ah, uh, I'm yeah, happy. Who was it? On. I know. Uh, Danny McGrain. Oh. Yeah, I'd have never got there, man. I never came to that. Which former footballer has played two spells with St Mirren, West Ham United and Celtic? Two spells? With St Mirren, West Ham United and Celtic. This is a famous footballer. You should Matt get Benny. this. Oh, yeah. I've done one. Willie, what a Willie, shout. Willie brings what in an home. absolute <laughs> shout, by the way. <laughs> well done, I've William. never into St Mirren like with the West Ham Celtic. Mate, I've actually yeah. got a signed autograph because I was in McAvenny's bar with my dad many moons ago and it's actually a West Ham strip one. I was like, you know, you must take one, mate. <laughs> so the first Celtic quiz back, William wins it. John, anything to yes. add? Do you think it's a fair call? It was, uh, relatively fair. I think you uh, gained was... some, I think you gained the first question again. Right, John. Taking turns <laughs> was a bit unfair, but there we go. Right. Right. When, when am I next on with Tony? I'm at Tony. 
That's on the Fiji Street. Well, I'm, I'm, the, I'm, the, I'm the next one to try it because I'm on my own next week, mate. So I've, I've got what? the next. Ah, no chance. Right, look, guys, that brings us to the end of the show. I want to thank my co host, John, two show regulars, Francis, and William. How's you enjoyed it? Ah, no, it's good. Ah, it's good fun, as always. I prefer it when we disagree. Oh, <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> And to the listeners at home. Wait, no, before you go, go Stephen, uh, just why let everybody just let everybody know that we will be moving to video very soon, <laughs> so you'll be able to see <laughs> our lovely faces, <laughs> which is a long time coming. But we're we're getting there slowly but surely. Yes, we're getting there, and we'll hopefully be there in the next few weeks. And that's all thanks to John and his hard work behind the scenes. And again. Have you enjoyed it again, guys? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah. And tell the listeners at home, until we speak again, stay well and keep safe. Heel, heel. <laughs>